So I wanted to thank everybody for coming this morning. A uh, wonderful, wet, windy morning in Vancouver. It's just a lovely day out there. So uh, thanks for taking the time to come uh, on such a, a wet day. Uh, I'm Bruce Reed. I'm the regional manager of the Oceans Program for Fisheries and Oceans Pacific Region. And so the um, DFO's Oceans Program leads in uh, the establishment of marine protected areas and uh, developing integrated ocean management plans. And so um, this often requires the use of different tools to assist with management and decision making. So Mark San is the most widely used conservation measure or planning uh, software in the world. And Mark San with Zones or Mar Zone is a new extension of this software that can provide multiple zoning options to help solve complex conservation planning problems in landscapes and seascapes. So we're very pleased this morning to have an expert on MarZone, Charles Steinbeck, uh, to tell us more about it. Uh, before I introduce Charles, I want to acknowledge DFO for supporting Charles' visit here to speak with all of us and thank Tides Canada Foundation for enabling us to webcast Charles' presentation to people tuning in across Canada. I also want to quickly outline our plan for the morning. After the presentation, there will be plenty of time for questions and answers with Charles. We'll facilitate this by uh, keeping a speakers list, and we'll have a microphone available. I see there's a mic on the side there. Um, if you uh, uh, want to stand up there and ask some questions, and uh, speak in the microphone so the people on the webcast can hear you clearly. I uh, also just want to remind you, there is a sign-up sheet that will be circulating around here if you haven't signed up uh, at the front when you came this morning. And uh, most importantly, please turn off your cell phone and pagers. We don't want interruptions during uh, Charles' talk. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Charles this morning. Uh, Charles is the Director of Marine Planning for EcoTrust USA. He leads EcoTrust marine spatial planning work and specializes in applying geographic information system tools to a better understanding and integration of the social, ecological, and ecological dimensions of marine resource management. He has nine years of experience in fisheries, marine resources, and coastal communities, and directs a large number of multi-phase projects related to stakeholder engagement and marine planning. Charles also oversees the development of marine spatial planning tools and methodologies for marine resource management. Charles is a native of Astoria, Oregon, so he's used to rain. So uh, please uh, join me in a warm welcome for Charles this morning. Good morning. Does everyone hear me all right? Yeah? Okay. Um, well, it's good to be here. I um, just want to get a sense for audience real quick. So how many of you guys are familiar with Mark Zan? Just a quick show of hands. Okay. How many of you guys have actually used Mark Zan? Okay. And Mark Zan with Zones? Familiar? Used? Okay. Um, the reason I asked is just uh, the material I'm going to cover. So I'm going to. So this is just kind of an outline. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about EcoTrust. A couple slides on what we do and and that we're the U.S. Um, I represent the U.S. version. Um, and then I'm going to give a little bit of background around marine conservation and zoning. Um, I think you guys, if you attended the talks yesterday or the discussions yesterday, heard a lot about that from Bud. So um, just a couple quick slides on that. And then I'm going to talk about and introduce Mark Zan with zones and compare and contrast that with Mark Zan. Um, and then dive into a paper that we uh, worked on uh, last year with Chris Klein and Hugh Possingham at the University of Queensland where we applied Mark Zan with zones to um, the Marine Life Protection Act process and um, show a little bit of the differences about inflexibility with Mark Zan with zones compared to Mark Zan. Um, so EcoTrust, um, we're based in Portland, Oregon, uh, and we have staff 55, a uh, budget of $8 million a year. We've been in existence for 18 years. Um, we have a sister organization, EcoTrust Canada, that we work with um, uh, closely on certain initiatives. Uh, we both share pretty much the same kind of philosophy around um, working to build a conservation economy uh, where we try and address and all the work that we do, both um, ecosystems and uh, the ecology, equity, and, and economic um, issues. And, and right now, at least our mission this year, our mission changes often, is uh, in investing in economic, social, and, and environmental in, in, in innovation. 
And we largely do this through sector programs, so fisheries, forestry, and food and farms. I work pretty much under the, the fisheries program. And in, the, in that fisheries program or our marine program, what we really focus in on is um, finding kind of middle ground solutions. And, and in particular, what I do is work on things around increasing knowledge. So that's largely around working with stakeholders to uh, capture data um, about where they use the ocean and how they value the ocean. Um, and then develop decision support tools to basically capture that information and then use that information through tools like Mark with Zones or um, other decision support tools like Marine Map, um, which has been used in, in California as well. And um, this is kind of just another slide based on that. And it's really what we're about right now is we've, you know, over the past five or six years have done a lot of work in California and now in Oregon and in some other places of, of working on methods and tools. And we're looking uh, forward to um, sharing that knowledge um, that we've, we've developed and as well as that technology with others. <clears throat> so like you heard uh, about yesterday from Bud, if you attended that um, that talk is that you know the cornerstone of most uh, of, of most marine protected or marine planning um, uh, processes are, are are based on marine protected areas, and there's lots of literature out there and a lot of mandates out there. And this is just a couple um, that are that are usually talked about the most. Um, and in any of these uh, initiatives uh, or mandates for marine protected areas or for marine spatial planning, there's often an element of zoning, right? And so, uh, and, and this is, these are just examples of, you know, the Great Barrier Reef and the Channel Islands and uh, China there on the bottom and Sweden on the right. And, and the idea of zoning is, uh, it's, I don't think it's new, but it seems complicated because you, you, know, you have a lot of users and a lot of things to consider. And um, are there tools out there um, that can kind of help inform multiple use zoning is really what you know, we're trying to address. So um, the current, at least what I'm familiar with, um, the current tools that are out there um, are pretty limited in that they're uh, typically just site selection approaches that only offer two types of zones. Either it's a, you know, a reserved zone or, a, or an open zone. And, and Mark Sand, for that matter, kind of falls into uh, that category. It's either you know, you're, you're, you're creating a reserve system um, that allows no take. Um, and and, and, and uh, the rest of it is open. And so there's lots of numerical optimization tools out there that do it. Um, um, but you know, as as you talk about more comprehensive planning uh, around spatial planning, marine spatial planning, or even just the example that we're going I'm gonna go through in California, it is just for marine protected areas. But there's different types of zones within those protected areas, and so you know, as you face more complex issues, multiple sectors, fisheries for or fisheries and. Um, military uses and um, non-consumptive recreational uses and shipping, how do you kind of factor all those sectors in um, and address them? Um, what we found, uh, at least in at least our work with Mark San and Mar Marzone, is that um, at least using tools like that can, you could, you know, have results that where you don't meet your conservation objectives um, or do meet them but exceed them and have, you know, pretty huge impacts on, on the consumptive, the fisheries, and the non-consumptive communities. And so the approaches that we've taken in using these tools is how, basically how can we efficiently represent all of our conservation targets but minimize those impacts to the, to the humans that are using the ocean. So in California, we, you know, the planners there had a need for you know, some different options in terms of zoning tools to help them inform this process. And so they basically, the initiative funded us and the University of Queensland to, to work on developing Mark Sandwich zones to inform their process there. Uh, the lead developer,